Welcome to Jones Memorial. We would like to welcome you into our cyber sanctuary. We are really working at Jones Memorial to expand and improve the digital ministry presence. So be sure to check out our website, jonesmemorial.com, and our new giving platform, which is linked from the website. Also, we're working on switching to a new management system for the church. You can help us make the transition by filling out a form with your latest correct contact information. You can find the form linked in the weekly messenger newsletter and also on our closed Facebook page. Please don't forget all the ways you can connect virtually at Jones Memorial right now. We have the upper room daily devotionals posted by Tina on the Jones Memorial staff page, worship song and reflection posted daily by Dwayne on the JMUMC group, Wednesday Connect, including a Zoom fellowship meal and opportunities for all ages to join in study. Jones Kids and Awanas on Sunday nights. Now, would you please join your hearts and minds as we are called to worship. God has called all God's people to lives of hope and service. We want to serve God, but sometimes life gets too difficult for us. Place your trust in God's power and love. God understands our needs, our sorrows, and our joys. Come, let us worship God who is always with us. Praise God for God's eternal presence. Amen.
continue to think about uh, moving from a stressed life to a blessed life, we're thinking about those moments when we miss opportunities or when, when roads or doors close uh, before us. And to guide our reflection this morning, the scripture reading will come from the Gospel of Mark. I'll be reading in chapter 10, verses 17 through 22. As Jesus continued down the road, a man ran up, knelt before him, and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to obtain eternal life? Jesus replied, Why do you call me good? No one is good except the one God. You know the commandments. Don't commit murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't give false testimony. Don't cheat. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he responded, I've kept all of these since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him carefully and loved him. He said, you are lacking one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor. Then you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But the man was dismayed at this statement and went away saddened because he had many possessions. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, little angels. I am so glad to have you worshiping with us today. Now, as you are driving along one day, maybe on the way to something amazing, maybe on the way to an awesome event, all of a sudden as you're driving along, you face a closure. A road is closed, preventing you from being able to get to the destination you seek. And all of a sudden, you're faced with a choice whether do I just sit here and stand in defeat or do I keep going? I don't know about you, but when I face situations like this while I'm driving around, I instantly look for the source of a new way. I look for signs that say this, detour, or I pull out my phone and instantly start looking for the best way to keep going. You know what, there's going to be times in our life where you're going to meet challenges and, and difficulties. We have to take those moments as not a moment to be stressed and saddened and depressed and defeated, but look for the source to find how to keep going. And the, our ultimate source, our way maker, is God. And he will help us to keep going no matter what we may face, no matter challenges or difficulties or missed opportunities, God can help us to keep going. So this week, as you face situations like this, I want you to stop and think, God, how can I keep going to soak up the hope and love and joy that only he can provide? I hope you all have an amazing week, and I look forward to seeing you at our Z groups and at Awanas. Bye. As we move now into a time of prayer, I invite you to lift up these folks who are listed on the screen before you, not only in this time of prayer, but throughout this week. Will you now bow with me for a word of prayer? Almighty Heavenly Father, we come to you with so many different burdens that we carry. We come to you in the midst of lo a lot of uncertainty, a lot of challenges, and a lot of difficulties. But we come to you this day, Lord, with confidence that you are the everlasting God, that you are our rock, our strength, our sure foundation in all things. And so we come also praising and worshiping you for your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gives us life in the midst of every challenge. 
and through whom we are blessed every single day. We pray, God, for each of these people whose names we have shared this morning, for those whose names are written on our hearts, and we pray, God, whatever it, challenge it is that they face right now, that you might be at work in their lives in just the way they need. May they know your comfort, your healing, your presence, your strength, your love, and even your joy in this time. And may your work in their lives, your work in our lives, your work in the world, become a testimony, a light for those who are all around us so that more and more people might experience each day what it means to live in you, to be loved by you, to be saved by you. And now, God, we pray that as we bring these offerings before you, that you would bless them and they would become a source of blessing for those in our community and beyond, that indeed more and more people might encounter life through our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is in his precious and holy name that we pray this day. Amen. Now I invite you to share your tithes and offerings. And may God receive and bless and use these gifts throughout our community. And as you share your gifts, I invite you to enjoy this gift from Carol Bradford and Charlie Stanberry. <laughs> Thanks to Carol for sharing that beautiful song with us this morning. That's one that I often sing um, to Owen at bedtime as he's uh, sort of falling asleep. It is a very good song. Uh, as we think this morning about how God is with us in the midst of very challenging circumstances, I have a friend who about six years ago lost her husband to pancreatic cancer. After he was diagnosed, they did everything they could to battle the disease. He underwent extensive chemo, which of course weakened him further. Still though, less than a year after his diagnosis, he was gone. It was and still is devastating for my friend and my colleague. Lo losing a spouse, of course, is never an, an easy thing under any circumstances. But this couple had been married for less than 10 years when he passed away. Since his death, my friend has dealt not only with the grief of loss and, and of loneliness, but also sadness about all of the missed opportunities, the life together that this cancer robbed she and her husband of. Still, 
from time to time, I'll be with her, and, and she'll be telling me about something that, that happened in her life, and then she'll say something like, I wish Greg was here. There's this regret, this pain around missed and lost opportunities. We encounter these sorts of closed doors in our lives for a lot of different reasons. And such missed moments can often become a source of stress for us. So it is this morning that we continue in this sermon series, From Stressed to Blessed. Over a period of six weeks, we are considering some of the common sources of stress in our lives and looking at what wisdom we can glean from our faith and from Christ's teachings that might help us deal with that stress. Today, we're thinking about the stress that's caused by missed opportunities or by closed doors and the regret that we may feel related to that. You know, most of the time, doors close and opportunities are missed because of circumstances that are beyond our control. Still, though, there are other times when such missed opportunities are related to our own choices or actions. Either way, when that feeling of, of regret begins to, to creep in, it, it can become overwhelming and stressful. And how we deal with that stress, how we deal with the regret, it matters. It can be the difference between fullness of life in Christ and a life of sadness and anger and even cynicism. So let me tell you the rest of the story about my colleague. Like all people who are missing a spouse, their life partner, my friend has to deal regularly with her grief. She has to face the, the raw sadness of all the life experiences that cannot be shared with her husband. But even though that sadness is real, she's not let it grip her. She hasn't let it rob her of life. Instead, she has become one of the fiercest advocates for cancer research that I know, and especially, of course, pancreatic cancer research. Every November, which is Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, she dyes her white hair a deep purple, which is the color of pancreatic cancer awareness. She has purple tie-dye t-shirts that she wears on a regular basis because her husband loved tie-dye. She still follows the latest developments in, in pancreatic cancer research. She reaches out to families facing pancreatic cancer diagnoses. A couple of years ago, she ordered a custom pair of Chacos. One of the things you know about me is I love Chacos. I notice Chacos. <laughs> so she ordered a custom pair of Chaco sandals, and on the back, she had the words wage hope embroidered. Wage Hope is the motto of the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. And in the face of a terrible loss, in the face of a horrible disease, waging hope is exactly what my friend is trying to do. When we face feelings of loss and regret because of closed roads or missed opportunities, we can drown in that or we can wage hope. We all know the frustration of, of roadblocks that are thrown up in our lives. We know the sadness of missed opportunities. We all have to deal with heart-wrenching disappointments. We have to handle disrupted plans and deferred hopes and unrealized dreams and aggravating detours. So what do we do when those things come into our lives, when we miss an amazing opportunity, when a door slams in our face. In our gospel lesson this morning, a man is anxious to enter God's kingdom. And so he seeks out Jesus and basically asks, what do I have to do? Jesus immediately recognizes that this man faithfully follows God. And so Jesus reminds him, reminds the man of, of what he already knows about the commandments. And then, as if just in case, Jesus begins to list them. And of course, the man says, I faithfully followed these commandments my whole life. And so then Jesus tells the man there's just one more thing. He needs to sell all his possessions, give the proceeds to the poor, and then follow Jesus. 
but the man can't do it. He's followed God's commands his whole life, but he can't take this next step. Mark tells us he's a very rich man, and clearly this rich man wasn't willing to part with his worldly possessions. He wasn't willing, willing to step away from the worldly realm and to fully enter into God's realm. And Mark reports that the man was dismayed at this instruction from Christ, and he went away sad. Christ opened before this man the greatest opportunity that he would ever have, and he turned and walked away. He missed this moment, and because of that, he left sad. Whether we make a poor choice that causes us to miss an opportunity or whether a door closes in our face because of something that's beyond our control, we will experience the stress, the sadness, and the regret that comes with that in our lives. If we let that uh, stress overtake us, though, our lives can really take a terrible turn. There are lots of wrong ways to deal with the stress of missed opportunities and closed doors. We can get angry, but that just causes our blood pressure to rise and, and it makes us bitter people. We can wallow in self-pity, but that ultimately, ultimately just leads to depression. We can quit. We can just walk away from everything. But that really only compounds the stress because likely we'll likely quitting will make us feel like failures. We can try and place blame for the problem, which tends to be a pretty popular response these days. For some reason, we're not too good at taking responsibility for our own poor choices, and so we put it off on someone else. Or if a door closes, we might spend a lot of time trying to figure out exactly why that happened. Sometimes, these sorts of exercises might be helpful, but a lot of times the efforts are just futile. And then all we've done is gotten bogged down in the problem even more, which leads to more disappointment and more stress. So there's all the wrong ways that we can handle the fallout of closed doors and, and missed opportunities in our lives, but I think we can all agree that none of those things really work. Like the man who walked away from Jesus, from God's kingdom, we will all be saddened and, and dismayed for the rest of our lives. But we can handle the stress of closed doors and missed opportunities differently. We can spend our energy and our effort working to find another way. Like my friend, in the face of devastation or disappointment, we can choose to wage hope. Think about these people in history who experienced some roadblocks in their lives, but still pressed on. Thomas Edison. Did you know that Thomas Edison's original desire was to work in the newspaper business? So he started his career by selling newspapers on a train. He was fired, though, because he spilled acid in the baggage car and set it on fire. When that accident slammed the door on Edison's dream of working in the newspaper business, he turned to telegraphy and scientific research. The Apostle Paul, he had a dream to take the gospel all the way to Spain, to the western edge of the known world. His plan was to travel towards Spain, preaching the good news all along the way. But then he was arrested and thrown in a prison cell in Rome. It would seem that Paul's gospel-sharing days were over. No more establishing new churches, no more reaching new believers. But then Paul got some ink and, and some parchment, and he started writing. And he wrote these letters that, that went out all across the Roman Empire and, and then all the way around the world. So not only did Paul's evangelistic work continue, even from behind prison bars, but the letters he wrote 
they now make up a good part of our New Testament. His words continue even today to impact lives with the good news of Jesus Christ. And speaking of Jesus, here is this man who hung on a cross, crucified by scared kings and jealous religious leaders. And yet, yet, God turned that closed door, or maybe we should say closed tomb, into his greatest victory. The greatest victory of all time. You know, friends, we are going to run up against roadblocks. It's going to happen in our lives over and over and over again. We're going to be cruising along, feeling that all is well, when suddenly a door slams in our face and everything changes. Or maybe by some series of happenstance or, or bad choices, we miss the opportunity of a lifetime. Sometimes these events are so extreme that the stress of them is overwhelming. And it could feel like it is the end. But friends, as Christians, we have this story. We have this faith in Christ that there is another way. And in Christ, there is always another way. So in the face of whatever life throws at us, in the midst of closed doors and missed opportunities, there is still life. There is still hope and joy. There's no need for us to waste energy trying to make something out of nothing. Instead, we need to just look toward the new. With the strength of Christ undergirding us, we always need to wage hope. Will you pray with me? Loving God, when things become so overwhelming and, and so stressful and so bleak and, and so di dire, it seems like the easiest way is just to give up. But you, God, are there for us. You are ready to make a new way if we will only turn to you. So help us, Lord, in this time and at all times to turn to you when we miss an opportunity, when, it, when a door slams before us. May we put our trust in you, God, and find new life as you set us on a new path, may we indeed know what it means to have victory in you, even as Christ himself is victorious. We thank you and we praise you for that truth. In Jesus' name, amen.
to continue the conversation at home as you think about missed opportunities or closed doors in your own life. You might want to share and talk about these questions with your family. Have you ever missed an opportunity or felt loss or regret? How can God help us move past these moments? How can focusing on God help us overcome these challenging moments in our life and bring us hope and joy? And then in the midst of that, how can we bring honor to God while overcoming our challenges? And now I invite you to receive this benediction. May you look to God in all things and know that God is ready to set your feet on a new path, no matter what you may face. Live in this confidence. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.